you know, shut down, shut down everyone's videos and everyone's audio. Yeah, let's, let's, you know. So, let's so you, really you will uh, introduce uh, me and all that, right? Baba? Yeah, 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 everything, everything. Yeah, yeah, Kaunji. For sure. Praveen, Praveen is, is there, by the way. He's my co-host. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we are live. Oh, thank you. Somebody wishing me happy birthday. Yeah. Is your birthday as well today? Come on, see. Today is my birthday. Today is my Oh, oh excellent. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy happy you, birthday. you did not even <laughs> tell me when I was planning. <laughs> this, is, this is a sudden surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, somebody, yeah, somebody knew, so he yeah, sent no, me a message. No, no. No, 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 that's great. Yeah. Yeah, August of 1945 was a fateful month, you know. I was born that month. We had two atom bombs, you know, you know over Japan, you know, you know, you know, you know, August 3rd and August 9th. And then we had, uh, you know, Japan surrender. And I was born. <laughs> 1945. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So should we start? Yeah, let's wait like for two minutes more because it's still I see a lot of participants are joining. Yeah. The numbers are growing. It's like 49 now. I think we yeah, 50. You already touched half a century. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, Rajiv. Yeah. yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah. There are 60 uh, people um, showing on my side. Yeah, Rajiv is uh, my best mate from I think this is, you know, kind of a great day and everyone is excited both for your talk obviously, and yes. obviously uh, about your birthday as well. So I think, yeah, I think it's already three minutes. I think Jizo will enter the remaining people who are still entering and me, me meanwhile, I will formally, you know, begin. So, yeah, so, so I, I'll begin that Jizo, it's already live, right? Yes, yes, you're live now. Yeah, yeah, great. All right. Uh, so I'm Vabhav. I'm... Uh, the lead of strategy, uh, startup and entrepreneurship, uh, uh, you know, special interest group of IIT Bombay Alumni Association. And we started this concept of the entre entrepreneurship GAN uh, just two months back. And uh, we had our inaugural lecture just, you know, last month. And this is the second lecture in, in that series. And uh, obviously, Kamalji is, uh, you know, here in front of us and all of you already know him, although, you know, I, I will you know, later invite Praveenji, you know, to, to introduce, but just to, you know, again, just, you know, to just uh, give a little bit about tech uh, or TEG, uh, how I envisioned was like a more, uh, more like a podcast kind of a thing. But then later I got to know that uh, there is already an existing SIG uh, uh, of which ITBA, you know, within ITBA, which Praveenji was already taking care of. And then I thought, you know, maybe I could join and, you know, I pitched in this idea particularly and he liked it. And we thought that, okay, we would, you know, just go forward with it. So the idea here is that, you know, there is some practice word, there is an academic word. We can bring together that collaboration, at, you know, via talks, via mentorship, via, you know, you know, giving some kind of support to the young entrepreneurs. So this is kind of a, you know, global platform, not just, you know, we won't be just having some sessions, some talks and lectures, but also we would, uh, you know, we will try to, you know, 
you know, sooner we'll try to come up with a with kind of a more of a you know mentorship oriented kind of a program that we are already you know kind of thinking of, and hopefully in the near future we would have it. But uh, you know, you know, it, it's it's not uh, you know it's 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 a you know, platform to just uh, you know create or support a vibrant exchange of uh, entrepreneurial gyan, which you know you know that is why it, it is named as the entrepreneurship gyan, and. Uh, you know what is what we envision is that uh, you know you know the the young entrepreneurs get all the support that uh, you know the you know all the the ventures uh, uh, you know all the existing uh, uh, you know you know we, we have uh, entrepreneurs like uh, Kamal ji you know who is already there you know between us and we had Ramanan ji for example in, in fact we have Praveen ji as well so all these veterans can share their expertise so we we young entrepreneurs can have their learnings but also you know we can also see that how we can continue with this you know thought process uh, in the future so that's that's the kind of the broad idea and for the larger co concept you can always look at look at that TEG concept which I will uh, share with you soon. Now I will invite Praveen ji, who is outgoing board member of IITB, you know, Alumni Association, who is also taking care, by the way, who is also taking care of all the SIG, you know, which I, you know, IIT Bombay Alumni Association has, and obviously this startup and entrepreneurship SIG as well. So I would invite him to formally introduce Kamal ji, and then you know we will move forward. Yeah, to you, Praveen. Point is, Kamal ji needs no introduction. He just <laughs> needs no introduction. Everyone knows him, but yet this is a formal thing because we are live streaming it. So those of uh, those of you that are not part of the ITB system, or those of you that have not been in the entrepreneurship ecosystem, or probably those of you who want to know a bit about Karmalji, here is some introduction to him. 1967 electrical engineering uh, graduate. Uh, please correct me, sir, if I'm wrong. And now here is the introduction. Uh, Kanwalji co-founded Excellent in Silicon Valley to commercialize Ethernet and TCP IP standards, uh, which became the basis of internet. He took Excellent public in 1987, becoming the first Indo-American founder and CEO to list a venture-backed company on the NASDAQ. Kanwalji was also CEO of Ensem and CEO of Cybermedia, both companies in which he was initially a lead investor, venture investor, and board member. <clears throat> So, Kanwalji is a well-known figure in the global Indian community and a widely recognized authority on entrepreneurship. He co-founded the Indus Entrepreneurship uh, Entrepreneurs Tie, as we know it, to promote Indian entrepreneurship and was Tie president through the late 90s, uh, presiding over its growth into a global organization with over 10,000 members uh, who have been behind Silicon Valley and Indian startups. Kanwalji also co-founded Inventus, where he works closely with entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley and in, and in India, as he has since 1995, to apply his full time and energy to helping them accomplish great results. He is also very active in Indian public policy related uh, to venture. Uh, he has advised Indian government policymakers in reforming venture regulations, and he has also successfully advised the Indian Prime Minister and his government on their aggressive deregulation of telecom. Uh, uh, industry laying the foundation for the country's impressive IT expansion. He has founded Kanwal Reiki Schools of Information Technology, Crescent. Uh, we know that, right? We have, uh, both at IIT Bombay and Michigan Tech. And he serves as an advisory board member for various organizations, including Stanford uh, Institute for Economic Policy Research and Rand Center for Asia Pacific Policy. The point here is uh, we can go on a long long introduction of Mr. Reiki. Uh, it, this can go on uh, for the length of this uh, discussion. The, this was a very short introduction to him. Excellent personality, excellent achiever, someone who is very, very accomplished, someone all of us know. We have seen that Crescent building in IIT Bombay. And so we have the Crescent founder here today talking about entrepreneurship. And I'm a big follower of uh, Kanwal Reiki ji on his LinkedIn. I mean, I, I read his posts quite a lot. Very incisive, very nice, very sharp insights that he offers. And his insights are always completely different from what a normal entrepreneur would give. He's always like, don't do this. He has an av avuncular, what you call, uh, uh, writing style, you know, don't do this. This is not right. And mm -hmm. when we had this conversation, what should he speak on? Because he's an expert, he's an expert on entrepreneurship. What should he speak on? He said, yeah, wait, wait, wait. He talks what we shouldn't do. And, entre and let us go and tell him that, please, sir, please talk about what entrepreneurs shouldn't do. Because we have a lot, lot of entrepreneurs in this group, uh, youngsters in this group who will be listening to him today. 
they would love to know what they shouldn't do. Everyone knows what to do, but what they shouldn't do is what Colonel Reiki Ji will speak on today. Sir, on to you. Well, thank you, Parveen. So, <clears throat> yeah, you know, but that was a very generous uh, introduction, but uh, let me tell you, you might yourself image. I, I was the luckiest person to be at the right place at the right time, you know, and uh, you know, when I left IIT, you know, I, I probably was the least known, you know, member of the batch and probably was least likely to succeed as a person. And, uh, you know, very unknown secret, I was not the, you know, IIT Bombay first, you know, division. I, I had sat in division, you know, in my final year. So it's all, you know, not much confidence, but, and I, you know, in my early career, I got laid up three times, you know, you know 1960, 1970, 71, you know, three jobs, you know, bang, 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 I got laid off. And that, you know, sort of, you know, toughened me up. Jobs are not forever. Jobs are not something that you can rely on. They are simple economic arrangement. Eventually, you have to become a master of your own destiny. And, and I told myself that nobody will ever lay me off ever again, you know, back in 1972. And nobody has ever done that since then. Entrepreneurship is the ultimate self-expression. You know, it, it's taking matters in your own hand and uh, you're making it happen. So, so I start by saying that, you know, this is a personal tapasya, you know, is a personal journey, you know, and you, know, you are, yeah, it's a very lonely journey. You, know, you are on your own. So, so, so I tell people that this is not something random, something, you know, which, you know, you do because your friends are doing it. this is something which has to come from deep from inside my first advice is don't do it with your family and friends you have to be very objective very harsh on yourself anytime you have friends and family involved you know you lose your objectivity you know you, know, you make concessions you make allowances you know you know yeah you are those that right so so you cannot make allowances for lack of performance on your own part or any of the, uh, member of your own team. It's a very rough journey, very little margin of error, you know, you have very scarce resources. So you need to become, you know, that's my first advice. Don't do it with your family and friends. You know, find the best partners, especially the partners who are some, somewhat divergent thinker from you. Yeah, and somewhat you know, divergent skill set. If you are an engineer, find somebody who is Martin and I, you know, yeah, don't get you know, somebody who thinks just like you, you know, then you get into group think and, you know, you need a, a three-dimensional approach to the world. And so you need people, you know, who, who are not white, you know, like you yeah, and same, ha have same skill set. The second thing I tell people is that don't expect any respect or any support from anybody, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, a, your family and friends will think you are a fool you know, you're giving up a secure, nice job, you know, with a steady salary and all that, you know, it takes a while before, you know, you, you make it happen. So those three, four years, you know, you, you, you don't get and you shouldn't expect any, any support, you know, you know, mental, emotional, you know, from family and friends. I mean, maybe your wife will support you, you know, but your wives have trouble yeah, because they have to suffer with you. Yeah, and wives have to. Mm, why are we doing it? Why can't you be like everybody else and be a steady person, get a job, you know, have a paycheck? You know, why do we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not do what other people do. You know, go to a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, so so you, you have to have this inner strength, and you know, so those are the two, two starting points. But I also tell people that don't fall in love with your idea. Yeah, the ideas have to stand the test of time. You, know, you cannot be emotional about it. You, know, you have to affirm them by doing your research. You know, the idea which is good today may not be good tomorrow. Yes, markets are very dynamic. They're always changing. Technology is very dynamic. It's always changing. So you have to reaffirm your faith every day. Am I still on the right track with the right idea? You know, 
based upon what happened in the marketplace yesterday. So people who fall in love with their ideas, you know, they go down with their ideas because uh, the ideas are always evolving. And uh, you know, so you, know, you need to do your market research. You know, don't be ideological about things. You know, and never fight the market. Never fight the market. The yeah, market is a collective wisdom of millions of people out there. Yeah, that doesn't mean that you don't mold or try to shape the market. Yeah, but yeah, it's like yeah, it's, yeah, riding a wave. You ride the wave, you don't fight the wave. You ride the markets, you don't fight the markets. So I want to tell you that this is not something for everybody. Yeah, only one to two percent of the people at large succeed as an entrepreneurs. You know, it's a very poor set of arts, and uh, you know you get very little moral and emotional support from from your your yes, your circle. So it has to you know it has to come from very deep inside you. And uh, but if you do succeed, you know, you know your rewards are plentiful. You know, you're set for life. You know, I, I was set for life at the age of 45. You know, when the company went public in 1987, I was only 45. I'm sorry, <laughs> I was only 42. And, uh, and yeah, I, you know, I stopped uh, working as a full-time person in 1995, you know, and I was, you know, only 50 years old. So, yes. And I've been pursuing my dreams. My yeah, yeah. This yeah, yeah. I had time and wealth and health, you know, to you know, do the things I did. You know, you know that uh, that Praveen mentioned earlier. And yeah, you know, it's a it's a very satisfying thing to do. Yeah, you know, but odds are very low. Odds are very low. So here is the secret. If you decide to become an entrepreneur, and no more than ten percent of the population. Yeah, you know, ever does that. You know, ninety percent of people don't even try. So you already are a part of the uh, group, you know, which is selected. You're self-selected. And if you are able to sustain that fire, a is the hardship that you experience for about a year. Your arts improve another tenfold. You know, you, you become a part of that. Yeah, you know, that one to two percent that needs to be there to succeed. But that one year, the initial one year is very hard, you know, you know, very hard journey. Nothing works. You know, nobody wants to you know, believe in you. Nobody's giving you the money. You know, so you have to sustain your faith. So, so I you know, come back to the, the, uh, things, you know, do it intellectually rather than emotionally. Do it with, you know, with your head rather than with your heart. You know, no family and friends, no allowances made for family and friends. And, and no tolerance for lack of performance. Don't fall in love with your ideas. Always evolve you know, based upon what you have seen. Believe your eyes and ears, you know, what you've seen in the marketplace. And uh, you know, yeah, yeah, good things will happen. So maybe I should leave at that one. You know, yeah, 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 Praveen, how are we going to handle the Q&A? I don't want to speak. Yeah, yeah, I want to engage with the with the, uh, with the people and and see why, what they want to. Yeah, here. So, can you see? Yes, uh, we, have, we, have not, yeah. uh, we have more than 120 members here. I am hoping that uh, some of them will raise their hands and ask questions. So, I think that that would be a nice way to uh, go ahead with yeah. this conversation. Why, okay, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be all right. Yeah. So anyone, so, maybe, know, yeah, maybe one of you just can start the ball rolling. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, Rajiv, can you get you know, the ball rolling? Yeah, I don't like to speak. I want to to ad, yeah, address the issues that people have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kanwal, yeah. first of all, thank you for sharing your wisdom at a high level. I mean, really, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, entrepreneurs require different sets of skills and trying to make a career in a big corporation, which is what I did. And, and I think the idea of learning to be yourself, uh, and not looking for support in early years, being bold. And I mean, they are, they are just spot on. I, I, I think, you know, I'm just listening to you and learning myself as well. So, you know, one of, one of the questions I have is if you were to advise somebody 
who has an idea, what is the best way for them to get started? You know, I mean, there is a path forward, the more venture capitalists, you have to sell your idea, but what, what, what are some of the key things one has to think about in order to get support for your idea? Okay, so, so, so let, me, let me give you a very harsh answer. The idea mm -hmm. is a dime a dozen. Everybody mm -hmm. has an idea. You know, and everybody thinks their ideas are great. Yep. You know, and, and unique. You know, so I, you know, I get very, um, I am busy. Uh, yeah, people are bombarding me with ideas all the time. So my starting point is no. Yeah, get lost. Yeah. I've, because every idea that somebody presents to me as a new, I have heard 20 other entrepreneurs giving me the same pitch over the you know, last few weeks, few months. So, so, so you have to become a little bit you know, creative. You know, you know, the, you know, I hate the ideas. I am the Uber of this and I am the you know, you know, Facebook of that. You know. so anybody who starts to present himself as a, a new avatar of some you know, some new fad, you know, you want to you know you throw them out because you know, you want a, you know, the ideas which are unique. You know, you know, a, they are, you know, it, they are not a day late, you know, day late and dollar short type of ideas. And if, if so so, and you need to have you know in, in this what I I define as as a intended target market size of the market that you're doing after you know. So I like the ideas here where the person starts by saying that here's a problem I see out there. And, and here's the solution that I, you know, I think you know, this market needs. You know, the things which are outside in, rather than here's the technology I have developed, here's the thing I have done, and I want to find a way to sell it. You know, I want to find a market. You know, so I absolutely detest you know, the ideas which are inside out. You need to come to me we, by identifying a market need, a market hole, you know, yeah, and and yeah, and tell me why is that there? Why the others don't see it? Why you uh, you are the yeah? What's your know, your unique you know, insight here? And what is your unique capability to address that issue? So so the ideas have to have you know, the home you know, they are they're going to find and after the size of the market, you know. And by the way, the the ideas emerge very rapidly when the markets are changing. Markets are changing, and you know, markets are changing because of technology, because of you know, various other things. In a static market, you know, the big guys will always have the advantage. You know. In a dynamic changing markets, entrepreneurs have a huge advantage because they have no inertia. No inertia. You know, because you know, they can rapidly change you know, and adapt to the new things. The big guys, you know, the enterprise corporations, have resources, inertia, you know, and they, they can't move fast enough. So I like the ideas, you know, which are based upon the market reality rather than the technology that you are developing. And, you know, and there's a change that is taking place in the marketplace, you know, and it's somewhat, you know, counterintuitive. Also, you want to be where the hockey part is gonna be rather than where the hockey part is right now, you know. It takes a year or two to execute. So you need to find a wave and try and say, this is where it's going to be, and I, I'm going to intercept it here, you know, year out, two years out. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. So Jain Sir Deshmukh is asking, how do you distinguish between faith in your idea and not being in love with it? <laughs> Yeah, well, there is a there is a little bit of an art, you know. There is a little bit of an art because uh, you know you need to. I I mentioned you know you need to define the market need and and, and why the need is there or will be there, right? And, and why yeah you know, you know that you yeah 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 you yeah and, and so there's a dynamic nature to the whole thing, right? Yeah, but when when the person starts to you know really. Tell me more, you know, getting nuts and bolts of technology. You know, you know, he's he's going to his Stanford zone. You know, his Stanford zone is you know, technology. Yeah. You, know, you need to have people who are stepping out of the Stanford zone, you know, trying to explain to you know, me, you know, why this thing will need this thing, why the others are, are not seeing it. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that he brings to, uh, to the party? Yeah, th that is so unique. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know if I have a yeah, more precise answer than that, but uh, anytime, you know, you, 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 you're not able to see the other, yeah. oh, by the way, any and all ideas that, that you have, you should assume that 10 people as smart as you or smarter than you have the same idea. Yeah, because uh, yeah, you, you, know, you don't have a, what I would tell you, really you know, unique insight. Everybody's seen at the same problem. So it, it not only becomes the idea itself, it's the execution becomes the biggest part. Can you assemble the team? Can you, you know, secure the financing? You know, you know, can you really execute? Yeah. So, so like I said before, the ID is a dime a dozen. You know, it's the whole package. Yeah, you know, that makes you a winner. All right, next one. So there is another question now from Kaustub Patekar. He says, mm -hmm. how do you regroup and restart after more than one failure? Uh, how do you deal with self-doubt? So absolute, failures are absolute part of the, of the process. Yeah, and I don't consider a failure a bad thing. Failures are learning experiences. You know, failures are required. You know, you know, if you're playing close to the edge, you're gonna fall over the edge. You know, it's like trying to learn to ride a horse. You don't know, fall. You don't know, fall. You know, and then you get back on the horse. You know, and yeah, it, you know, it's a, uh, you know, you, you know, this is the uh, thing I said earlier. It's a personal capacity. You, you're not gonna let anything deter you. You're gonna make it happen. You know, and and you know, failure. Mm. Yeah, but so by the way, so let me tell you, you know, another you know, way of thinking. You need to own your failures. You need to own your faults. You should start by saying that I am not perfect. I'm going to you know, have issues. You know, so I, how do I account for them? How do I, you know, I made the point you know, that you find people who are complementary to you. If you're an engineer, you find a, a marketing guy as your partner. You, you, you identify your shortcomings and f trying to find, fill those holes. So the failures you know, happen because you, know, you, know, you have blind spots. You know, you know, something bites you from the left field and you, know, because you didn't see it coming, right? You know, so, and you learn, you learn you know, uh, one or two failures. You know, you know, your senses get much sharper. You become very, very much aware of uh, potential uh, failures. The, a successful entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur outlasts others. The others are failing and dropping out and, and he's yeah, going to stay in the game and outlast the others. All right. So Gyan is asking, how do you deal with friction or conflict between founding team members? Friction and, and uh, conflict. Yeah, it's very good. It's very good because that's how you perfect your ideas. You know, if you have a group think, everybody thinks alike, everybody likes everybody, you know, you, know, you need to have, you know, not, not this three dimensional picture. What you need is respect for each team member. You have to have respect for others' perspective. If somebody has a different perspective, you have to you know, accept that and, and try to understand why. Are you at intellectual level? Are you at intellectual level, not at a personal level? You know, the, the person thinks differently has, because he has a different perspective, he has a different experience base. And so you have to assume, you know, A, it's valid, you know, and you know, and may, maybe my, my perspective, my experience is not the right one. Maybe I should adopt. So there's a give and take. You know, it's like a marriage. It's like a marriage. There's a give and take. If you try to assert control and leadership, you know, you don't have the team fall apart. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah, this is a team sport. You are a leader. Yeah, everybody should have a right to you know, speak. Everybody should have a right to express you know, their opinion, their perspective. And you develop a, a collective model that everybody says, okay, we have taken everybody's stuff into account. And, and this is what we're gonna do until we see something change. You know, so, so you're, you know, there's a, this is a, 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 a plan of the day, agenda for our business. And this is what we are situated on unless something changes and we have to change our plan. 
So you know, so you're know, managing. Yeah, you, know, you 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 have smart people. You know, you have to incentivize them. You have to motivate them. You know, and 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 so this whole thing you know, is a leadership issue. You know, entrepreneurs are good entrepreneurs are good leaders. That's that's a very good point. So there is another question here. Mm -hmm. Is there a concept that an idea is stupid? It it is not high tech enough, or uh, otherwise it will not find funding. This is what G S Rao asks you. You know, there is no such thing as a stupid idea if it works in the marketplace. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, my my approach to the whole thing is it, you know, the ideas have to stand the test of time. Of course, you know. It, if if your idea needs a validation by by others, you know, then you are not a sovereign entrepreneur. You know, you don't have to make it happen. If you believe it in it, you passionately believe in it, you see the market for it, you have done all your thinking, you know, ignore everybody else and make it happen. Yeah, you know, I see it all the time. And and I should tell you, you know, I was stupid enough to buy, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, reject some of the ideas which I didn't understand. You know, when the social media was happening in 2001, 2002, I couldn't believe you know, this didn't make any sense. You know, there were people who were pitching to me and I wasn't smart enough to, to figure out. You know, just to tell you a story about the Hotmail. You know, when, when uh, Sameer Bhatia presented to me Hotmail idea, free mail for everybody, you know, it was costing a lot of money, you know, and, uh, yeah, there was no revenue and there's no potential of revenue. And he pitched to me and I said, see, this thing is a sure way to get poor. You know, how we don't make money? See, so he, he tells me that if you have 10 million users, will be, you know, this, this will be worth a lot. But 10 million users is not cost as a couple of million dollars to get there. He says, yeah, yeah. So I didn't, I didn't support him you know, even, uh, initially, but then, then I started to think through it. Say, okay, yeah, I'll engage with him. But by that time, you know, he was getting 60,000 new users a day. And, and you know, yeah, he had 10 million users and Microsoft bought him for $4 million. And that's when I realized, you know, hey, an asset has no inherent value. Asset has a value in the context. You know, Microsoft, you know, Savir had nothing to upsell to these 10 million users, but Microsoft did. You know, Microsoft was, uh, you know, had spent $2 billion and had, yeah, yeah, this um, MSNet, which had a close to a million users, and they could buy from from severe ten million users for four million dollars, forty dollars per users versus two thousand dollars per users. So, as a, an idea has a time test be, uh, around it, so so entrepreneurs are able to see that one. You know, severe was able to see it that I was not able to see it until much later. And so you know, so so I don't consider you know, the, you know that you should believe. Yeah, yeah, it's all comes from inside. By the way, yeah, Sabir, uh, yeah, VCs had told him, yeah, 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 no, yeah, if he had not done bought by Microsoft, yeah, he would have, yeah, had to shut down. Yeah, I think academia in academia, commonly we call it as dis disruptive innovation. And now mm -hmm. it is, has become a whole lot in a different area of study by both academicians and practitioners. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we yeah. invented yeah, a thing called viral, uh, viral you know, marketing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and 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 he also, you know, you know, you know, you know, we, we, we now all understand that if you end up having 10 million users behind an idea, you know, there's a way to monetize that. One yeah. way or the other. You know, if you're not able to monetize yourself, somebody else is able to monetize it, right? Yeah. So another question is from Lakshmi Kant Nanda, and he's asking, as a young one in career, what to do if we have multiple ideas where we have risk of, you know, being, you know, where we have a risk of failure. Also, not from a business family. So, you know, that yeah, is the kind so, of the, so, so most of the entrepreneurs I know are not, are not from business families. You know, they, you know yeah, I, my, my family background is military. You know, my father was in the army. My two elder brothers were in the army. You know, so, you know, so, so family back, yeah, background of not being in the business is, is not a, yeah, yeah, not an issue. So let me tell you about the ideas, multiple ideas. Entrepreneurship 
is like learning to ride a horse. Yeah, you know, entrepreneur is the jockey, the horse is the market. And technology, whatever you want to talk, you know, horse throws you. Yeah, you know, it's very, you know, it's tough to learn to ride a horse, but you eventually learn to ride, you know, the horse starts to understand you and you start to understand horse and, and, and everything works. When you have multiple ideas, you have, you're learning to ride multiple horses at the same time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's it's not yeah, twice as hard, it's a thousand times as hard. Yeah. Every idea, every market has its own dynamics, its own economics, its own task structure. Yeah, and you as an entrepreneur who is not experienced businessman is trying to learn all that while he's trying to make it happen. Yeah, so so multiple ideas are, in my opinion, sure way to fail. Sure way to fail. Pick an idea, make it happen. Yeah, and uh, so when you yeah go after the multiple ideas, yeah, you know, I, yeah, if you read my post, I I use the word yafos, yet another freaking opportunity. Yeah, yeah, you chase yafos. You know, you fail. You know, you, you know, you, like I said earlier, you pick an idea. This is the plan of the day. This is what I'm going to execute based upon what I know, what I have you know, studied, what I believe in market, what I believe. You know. Unless something changes, you, know, you don't want to change your plan because there's a lot of waste of resources you know, that you have invested in when you change the plan. And also, by the way, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence anyway, right? So yeah, so when you start to look at the other people's idea, you know, you start, you start changing the yeah, first. So if you have multiple ideas, you're not ready to be an entrepreneur. I think that is spot on what not to do as an entrepreneur. I think that is what people have been yes. waiting for. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Please go ahead, Pramindi. Yeah. So so the next question is like uh, someone is trying to, I mean, probably this is a young chap. He's trying to find out your views on uh, our different business segment, business industry. Industry is He asked, what are your views on the climate solution space? Probably he has some solutions there. So what are your views on the climate solution space? And do you know of any subsection that you, that you feel are, is promising? Uh, so, so I am very, very hard-nosed entrepreneur. Yeah, you know, if it yeah, you know, climate power is not the problem that me as an entrepreneur can solve. Yeah, you know, the the entrepreneurship of the modern type tribes to provide a solution to the market. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, which is you know, expanding rapidly, right? So, so the climate is is a you know, to be the problem for an entrepreneur. You know, to be addressing. Yeah, you know, that's a you know, problem at the government level and all that. You know, I, as a you know, person, you don't want to be you know, distracted by social needs or, or societal needs. I want to solve this one problem successfully to, you know, that I see in the marketplace. And, and uh, yeah, if, if I want to be in you know, philanthropy, you know, save the world, you know, I sh you know, either I you know, need to make tons of money that I can spend or I need to do, you know, starve and, and don't do it, right? Yeah, the, to me, entrepreneurship is a very narrowly focused you know, problem-solving situation. And climate problem is too big a problem for an entrepreneur to take on. Yeah, I, d d I think yeah, my view of the entrepreneurship and the job creation, wealth creation is, is a goodness by itself. You don't create wealth and, and, and jobs in society, you're doing a lot of good. All right. So there is another question by Mukesh, and and he's asking how to balance between selling and building in early days. Customers yeah. ask for solution and expertise between, you know, talking, and you need to talk to customers before building. So selling is all about selling. It's all about selling. Yeah, you want to build what customer wants to buy. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to. It's much easier to sell to the customer what he wants to buy than to sell a push what you have that he may not need to buy. So, to, so if you have customers who are telling you, you know, hey, I need this from you, yeah, you, you should rearrange your priorities. 
uh, unless you know you see a bigger market and and you see a you know, a bigger region you know and then you're willing to take the bigger risk so 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 the a good entrepreneur is always listening to what is customers are telling him yeah you know, what you think customer might need might prioritize may not be what customer really needs and prioritizes you know, one of the problems with engineers and entrepreneurs is they think this feature is great. Customers have zero value for that feature. You know, you need to find out. You need to understand. You need to hear. You need to give customer what he wants rather than what you think he wants. So selling is the number one priority. Always be selling. Always be delivering what customer wants. Always be you know, prioritizing what customer needs. So there is there is very interesting question uh, from Afzal Modak. He says Reliance Retail is not a new idea. So a few uh, billion dollars and build a hundred billion dollar company and and it uh, really works well. So are the odds in favor of the rich? Are no, the odds in favor uh, of the rich? Odds are not in favor of the rich. If that was the case, yeah, then you will never have these entrepreneurs emerge anywhere. People like me emerge anywhere. <laughs> yeah, so the reason yeah, the, the big companies are not able to do it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I gave you the condition, the markets are always changing and dynamic, right? So 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 that that says the people who have inertia, rich people have inertia. Yeah, you know, they cannot move fast enough. You know, they cannot move fast enough. If you are if you are a company, you have customers, you have an inventory, you have factories, yeah. You know, you cannot respond to changes in the marketplace rapidly. An entrepreneur who has no inertia whatsoever can jump on an opportunity. And, and, and by the way, you know, up, upset the apple cart that other person owns. So, so, so the, the entrepreneurs, you know, what they bring to the party is very, very you know, much you know, fast response, you know, absolutely fortress response. To a single problem, and, and they they don't have anything to worry about. You know, a upsetting their own apple cart, right? So coming back to the another point I want to make: the skills that you need to build a fifty million dollar company are different than the skills you need to build a five billion dollar company from fifty million. You know, you need to be an entrepreneur, impulsive, you know, rapidly moving, die innovative, you know, disruptive. You know, to build a new company. You need to be a manager, preserver, listening to the customers, evolver, you know, to build a large company. You know, the distribution is a slow process. Innovation is a fast process. So, so at some level, entrepreneurs should hand the company over to a manager or bring a manager in as a partner because you don't want to disrupt your own uh, business, $50 million business by being innovative all the time. Innovation is instability at some, at some level, right? You want to be, but there's nothing to be uh, uh, instable about, unstable about it when you have nothing. But when you have $50 million business, you start to have the assets, you start to have inertia. You cannot be disruptive that you are as a, as a raw entrepreneur. So to build a large company, yeah, yeah, this is one of the other points I made. Yeah, you need both. You need dynamic, innovative, and disruptive entrepreneurs. You need stable, you know, evolutionary, yeah, yeah, managers. Yeah, one provides stability in the environment. Yeah, large scale distribution, large scale manufacturing, and the other provide dynamism in the environment. Yeah. To make sure they fail. you're keeping up with the technology and the new ideas, and and societies you know, need both. You know, America has it. You know, if you become Japan, you are too much manager, you are less innovative. You are in trouble. Germany is in trouble as a result. But if you are too innovative, like Nigerians, you are in trouble too. Very unstable setup. So, so yeah, you know, people ask me who are better managers or entrepreneurs. I say. Neither, yeah. Society needs them both. They both have a purpose to serve. All right. So Sarthak is asking how to think about entering a market where you have no prior experience. I entered a market where I had no experience whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was a hardcore 
engineer. Yeah, yeah, in through 70s, yeah, hardcore digital engineer. Yeah, doing CPU designs, do, doing logic designs. Yeah, yeah. So coming into 80s, yeah, computers are becoming you know, yeah, pervasive. Mainframes that I worked on, many computers that I worked on, all of a sudden, you know, you have this personal computer, PC, Apple, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, that I had not worked on yet. But but yeah, but you could see, you could see, yeah, you know, this hodgepodge of machines and you know, very nice stable environment of mainframes, you know, where everybody knew you know, what you know, um, um, you know, yeah, same thing, you know, same software into multiple multi city of many computers. I started to think, hey, my company has all these machines and they did pain in trying to change it, move data from here to there to there. It was a big effort to get your PC data into your mini computer or into your mainframe. And it started to become very clear to me that hey, they are, the world would need networking. I had no networking background. I had no communications background. But but once I decided that the world needs it, you know, it was just a matter of me agitating myself. You know, and we stood only a few months. So yeah, you know, and then I hired people in the areas where yeah, you know, yeah, I did, didn't have expertise. And uh, yeah, so we, yeah. So the the point I made yeah, earlier, you assemble a team. A team has as a batsman, as a wicket keeper, as a baller, you know, you know, a fielder. So you you don't assemble a team. You know, entrepreneurial teams are just like that. So there is one interesting question from a professor. I think uh, uh, Pradeep Vaishal is a professor. He says, as a teacher, how do I identify potential in a student for becoming an entrepreneur? Yeah, the, the, the guy who's always uh, asking you, you know, silly questions. Yeah. The, the, so, so let me tell you, yeah, yeah, and this this is a little bit of, of, of a yeah, lighthearted note. The top students, top students become professors, researchers, R&D people. You know, they don't do their PhD. Yeah, the second year students, you know, yeah, they're a little bit more serious. You know, they become managers. You know, they become CEOs. You know, yeah. And the the third year students like me, I was a third year student at, at IIT. Yeah, yeah, we are restless. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. We looked up to the top students. Yeah, and uh, Arun Netravali was guard when I was at IIT Bombay. Yeah, and he became guard head, head of the Bell Labs, yeah, yeah, and, and all that. But but I was very restless. Yeah, you know, I was going to have my my mark on the on the world. And yeah, so when when the PC IBM PC that announced, <coughs> I saw an opportunity of world being turned upside down, and and it would need to be connected, and I jumped at it to become an entrepreneur. So there's there's no way a professor can ad identify a person like me, you know, as a potential entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. But but my thing is, as you specialize more, as you become more and more into PhDs and all that, your scope narrows. You go deeper in, in a different domain. Entrepreneurs are very broad thinkers. You know, yeah, they are not specialists in one thing. They are jets of a lot of trades. The better still you need you know, to be an entrepreneur is sales benching. Yeah, yeah. And top students are a yeah, little awkward in selling. Yeah, so the bit still you need is to sell yourself. A entrepreneurial a person has to sell himself to give up the comforts of life, sell family and friends, spouses to suffer with him. Sell to potential implies to determine work for him for less salary than they are making right now with less stable environment, and then sell the investors to give him money for his half-bit ideas and then sell the customers to buy his half paid products before they're ready. So the better still that you need is salesmanship. And I, I'm sure most professors will have trouble identifying that one. <laughs> true, very true. 
So, uh, uh, Sri uh, Sri I mean, does, does it make sense or not? Yeah, to me it makes sense. I think I think it's the same uh, with Provincia as well, right? <laughs> yeah. So, Sri Hari is asking, what if we have a working MVP? What should be our approach in raising funds? What in MVP? Yeah, so that means uh, you have identified the market. Yeah, you, you have the viable product, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you need a story. Then you need a story. Yeah, the, from MVP to successful business, you know, it's execution, right? So the the so by the way, the, the VC model. VC model requires a rapid adoption in the marketplace of what you have. And so you, you, so you have to build a story around a rapidly evolving market requiring this, this uh, product that I have developed. And here's the marketing approach uh, that I will use you know, you know, you know, to very quickly you know, move you know, the product side. So, so there's a storytelling, you know, that's you know, which is part of self-selling, you know, storytelling that entrepreneurs have to develop, you know, a viable, believable story. Yeah. And by the way, yeah, it, the entrepreneurship and VC, entrepreneurs and VCs have a very different relationship, you know, than the others. The entrepreneurs are dreamers and VCs are dream merchants. You know, so you have to sell your dream to the, you know, the you know, dream merchants. You know, they have to connect at that that level. You know that. Uh, yeah. If if a VC starts to believe in your dream, you know, then you have a shared dream to 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 make it happen. And uh, you know, it, so it's, it, all this other other stuff is nonsense about you know, VCs. VCs eventually have to you know, get into you know. You know yeah, in tune with the so, so let me tell you my story again. Yeah. So when I was out selling in 1982, John Bosch, yeah, the, yeah, the VC who invested in my company, he loved the idea that I had. You know, he immediately bought into me, yeah, yeah, this notion of yeah, all these uh, computers will uh, will be connect, you know, connecting to each other. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, he had to overcome the idea of an Indian entrepreneur. You know, because there had not been any Indian entrepreneurs that he had seen before, uh, you know, because there weren't any. But he loved everything about what I was telling him. And, and yeah, so eventually he said, you know, no, well, yeah, there haven't been any Indian entrepreneurs. And you know, I don't know why, maybe it's time to try one. You know, so he loved the idea. So he tried one and he lived to tell the story to the world. You know, he, John Bosch will tell, he invented Indian entrepreneurs in the valley. Yeah, he made hundred times his money. Yeah, so so there's there's this uh, idea of being able to tell your story as a as a plausible. You know that that and by the way, here's another secret. It's much easier to sell a story than reality. Reality is never as pretty. Reality is never as pretty. Your story, you can paint a very nice picture. You know, and you can sell a nice picture. Reality, you know, when you do and tell the guy, yeah, I have a customer, I have you know, this, I tried, he'll say, mm, yeah, show me, get, get me two more customers. You know, show me this, uh, some more products. So, so when, 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 re, when you start to sell reality, they want to see more of it. When you tell a story, you know, you know, sell, you know sell a dream, a painted picture, it's much easier to sell. Yeah, it's very counterintuitive, right? This is this is pretty interesting. This is pretty interesting, actually. And I think there is a startup here, uh, Deepak Tanap, either a startup or a pro I'm assuming that is a startup. And uh, pro this, this question is uh, pretty much linked to what you've just said. He has uh, limited resources initially. And as a startup, you have limited resources initially. So he says, what are the factors I need to consider uh, to strategize and prioritize to ensure that uh, I don't get over, overwhelmed with too many things? Yeah, yeah. you know, the, 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 the name of the game is to sell that dream 
yeah, and then have a shared dream, have that VC investor that invested in your dream emotionally, yeah, and then financial investments will follow. If you if he has to invest in reality, then he needs to have a lot more due diligence, a lot more real stuff yeah, before he you know, parts with his money. So it's become bit much harder to raise money if you have been at it for two, three, four years than, than when you're just starting out. You know, you need to package yourself as a believable yourself as a believable with your idea as a believable product and and and, and sell that. You know, hey, here's a market that you identified, here's the you know, solution that you have, uh, and it only needs money, you know, to make it happen. Yeah. You know, All right. But, so, but yeah. every you know, there's no one formula. You know, the determination of a person, the market, the idea, the team, and the investor, uh, and the different you know, determinations work. Yeah. So I don't tell tell anybody there's a formulate approach that works. Yeah, great. So Sune is asking comparison of the last few startup years to the dot com bubble. Yeah. So the marketplace is open looped. Yeah, and and that is very good. Yeah, yeah. You do, yeah. Have your silly ideas. You made it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The eventually, you know, you know, like every everything else, you know, you know the, the story of uh, America, you know, how the West was won. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, initially, you have pioneers. You know, they go out and they you know, disturb you know, things. You know, you know, you know, you know, the Lewis and Clark, you know, and then, then you have, you know, the, you know, the, the, you know, yeah. uh, initially you have explorers who go out, then you have pioneers, you know, who, you know, who go and set up a thing. And then, then comes the settlers, you know, who come and settle, you know, and then come the exploiters. And that happens in the marketplace. You know, you know, you have pioneers, you know, you have with the new ideas, and then you have, you know, explorers, you know, so, so the, but marketplace is very, very, you know, you know, a, a good way to, you know, to decide, you know, it lets things happen. And eventually things are out of control, the exploiters come in and, and, you know, they start doing silly stuff you know, and, the, you know, and the market lowers the boom very quickly. And this is what happened, you know, in that time. You know, there was a notion of that time that, all the old-fashioned asset-based businesses is nonsense. You know, this, this is a new economy, We're just driven by ideas alone. You know, you know, you know no energy whatsoever, no friction. And uh, the, the same thing is happening in India. You know, people get their fingers burnt. They get smarter. You know, expectations of valuations have become more reasonable, and which is what's happening in India right now, right? You know, and then there's a progress. You know, but the system is open looped. Yeah, you know, and the memories are short. You know, another cycle will. Yeah, you know, every wave runs. You know, eventually it brings you back to the beach. No wave goes forever. You know, I compare the the entrepreneurship to surfing on the beach. You paddle out hard to catch a wave, but it always brings you back to the beach. So yeah, uh, there is there is a very beach. interesting question. Uh, this is very close to my heart as an entrepreneur myself. You know, I. I make lots of mistakes and then I cope very soon. Uh, that is that is my, my that is my way of uh, coping. I mean, uh, uh, getting over with problems. I have clients that also face a lot of problems and they fail. And and some clients actually cope up, cope very fast. Some don't. Okay. Mm. So the next question is from Kaushal Rajora. He says, "What are your biggest failures or mistakes, and how did you cope with them?" Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to disclose all my dirty secrets, but I have failed more very often. You know, and, and like I said earlier, every failure is a learning experience. Every failure is a learning. You have to accept. But if you are failing all the time and not ever succeeding, you know, then you have to look in the mirror. Yeah, you know, the, the, the entrepreneurship when you're playing close to the edge is a dangerous game. You don't step over the edge. You don't have fall. And nobody has the monopoly on smarts. Technology is too big and too complex. Technology is too big and too complex. I saw things late. You know, you know the, the wisdom 
if that I acquired is from learning from my failures. Yeah. I should have invested in, in Hotmail. I knew, you know, very early. He came and pitched me very early. Yeah. Social media, yeah, babe, I missed. Yeah. And uh, yeah, in the beginning, yeah, I did well yeah, yeah, later. But everything is a learning experience. And by the way, the, the point I made earlier, it's a rapidly changing world. And unless you tell me the world will start changing tomorrow, it's going to be rapidly changing the world for foreseeable future. Opportunities are going to be there left and right. You know, the fact that you failed yesterday doesn't mean that you will fail tomorrow. And the fact that you succeeded yesterday doesn't mean that you will succeed tomorrow. So, yeah, so there is a combination of everything. And one thing you know, that I forgot to mention earlier on that we all need to succeed is luck. Yeah, yeah, uh, you can do everything right. You still have to have Lady Luck smile at you. She, if she decides to spit in your face, your history, no matter how good you are. So luck is an element, you know, which is a, a element of randomness, which is there, yeah. And you overcome all that by doing multiple times. You know, it's like learning to ride a horse. You fall down, you get back on the horse, you fall down, you get back on the horse. But you, after 10 times you fall down, you know, then you say, well, maybe it's not for me. All right. So Lalit is asking, what are your thoughts on staying in the US versus going back and building in India? You know, this nationalism part is a nonsense part, right? We yeah. built India. They built India from here. The Indian brand got built by you know, Indians in Silicon Valley. The Indian brand was built by people like me, you know, people like Rajiv, you know, who became CEO of Roman House. You know, there was this notion, you know, hey, <coughs> are there more like you in India? So this whole brand building that uh, happened yeah, so you know, uh, this idea of Taritam you know, revolution you know, would have never happened. I spent a huge amount of time spending, chasing down you know, and talking to the prime minister and finally uh, giving him you know, the idea and he said, let's do it. And, and that changed India. So the notion that you have to be in India to change India or build India is a nonsense notion. We are free people, yeah. I have no direction to be in India anymore. All my family is here. All my brothers, sisters, my mother, yeah, they all they all here. Yeah. But my direction to India is emotional. You know, I think of India as a as a noble experiment. Yeah, a very noble experiment. A country that poor, that it, you know, yeah, you know, illiterate, you know, that diverse chose to become a democracy and sustain it for. You know, 76 years, you know, you know, it's a noble experiment. You know, it's finally adopted, you know, the market economy, not fully, but, you know, substantially adopted market economy and started to produce the results. <laughs> they, you know, Americans are no smarter than us and they don't work any harder than us, but they have the democracy and the market matched. India had a democracy and a socialism that doesn't work. Didn't work. Now it's starting to work because they have a market, right? I believe, I wish they have more belief in market. India needs 10 million entrepreneurs. The ideas that we have brought to India, you know, have had a substantial impact. In the notion that you have to be there, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, jingoism, nationalism, you know, they are, they are the last views of. Of the rationals. This is the classic uh, Kadwal Rekhi speaking. You know, it's like your LinkedIn post is coming out alive in this comment. And this is precisely <laughs> this is precisely what I personally love. I mean, the kind of incisiveness that you have. I mean, perfect. Okay. So there is another question almost uh, linked to this. You know, uh, uh, technopreneurs in India, they always feel that we are we are not doing enough for the global markets. So Sarthak in yeah, Nijawan, I didn't, says, I didn't nonsense. I didn't nonsense, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, we start you know, we start worrying about you know we are not doing enough of technology. We're not doing enough R and D. I remember, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, the the IT services techno tools. Remember that word? Yeah, you know, the IT service ties. You know, we are not doing any product design. We are doing yeah. You know, yeah, give me a break. 
you know, $250 billion, $300 billion marketplace created by entrepreneurs with almost no resources in their hand, right? You know, implying five, six, seven, eight million people. So, you know, the, I think as long as you create jobs and wealth, it doesn't matter, you know, you know, you know how you got there. You know, the, the emotional speech, you know, we are not into deep R&D, we are not doing, you know, poor, you know, the, 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 it's time for India to absorb knowledge and, and technology and make it happen. The, the debate between Sam Petroda and me that took place in the 80s, Sam was in favor of de developing our own technology for, for Teletop, you know, CDOT, blah, blah, blah. He spent $10 billion. And I was saying, why can't we adopt the technology which is out there, proven cheap, and make it a provided service in India? Eventually, I won that debate. Yeah. Sam and I had a debate in Chicago. He says, one man, one telephone is a wasteful Western luxury that India can ill afford. Yeah, yeah. So what do we have now in India? Yeah. Wasteful Western luxury. Yeah, yeah. So so the uh, adopting technology and knowledge and making it happen now is the need of the day. Yeah, you know, eventually when enough wealth is created, people have surplus capital, surplus time, they will do the other stuff. But that's not going to make a big difference, like, you know, the life of people. The, to make the life of people, you know, the Taitam has revolutionized India. You know, and, and you know, we didn't develop that technology. We adopted that very quickly. Let the, you know, we let the entrepreneurs do it, right? So the notion that you have to do this other stuff, you know, it, it's, it's just about chest thumping. You know, what we need to do is to provide the entrepreneurs a playing field so they solve the problems that they see in the marketplace, they create the jobs and wealth. India's problem is poverty. How do we remove poverty? We create more wealth in India. You know, so what we need to do is we, uh, you know, we need to open this farm sector, agriculture sector to entrepreneurship. You know, we need to have entrepreneurs do, you know, make the market function in that environment. You know, the Indian farm sector is stuck in the mud you know, because the government controls almost everything. So the notion you know, that we need to be doing the latest technology is a nonsense notion. You know, we have the, you know, yeah, we, our need is very different. You see what China did. China didn't invent any other stuff and they became a powerful country by absorbing the knowledge and technology from other places. You, you've just not talked about the farm sector, right? There is one question from Jasveer Singh, who is working on IoT agrotech, agritech startup. He says, uh, we have seen in India, pre-revenue startups don't get funded easily. Only a very few startups are able to get yeah, yeah, that yeah, based yeah, on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, by, by the, this, this is a turn a plan in every area. Because you know, the entrepreneurs, I mean, VCs are like, like sheep. Yeah. We need a goat. We need a goat which will find you know, and the sheep will follow. Yeah, yeah. So if somebody needs to prove there were no Indians being funded in America, and now Indians are being funded everywhere in India, in America. You don't have to prove. So you can't be complaining too much, right? Yeah, you know, you know, just make it happen. Yeah, that's the thing about entrepreneurs, they make it happen with very little. You know, so we can complain all day. You know, the idea that the, you know, you know, then you're externalizing you know, the responsibility, you're blaming others for, for your own failures. You know, I said you have to own your failure, you have to own it and make it happen in spite of you know, all the hard times. That's what the entrepreneurs do. They overcome all the hardships. So, you know, right. yeah, so they, yeah, we need to have entrepreneurs do prove it that there's, yeah, and the, the old California saying there's a drill in them dark hills, there's a drill in them dark fields in India. Yeah, hey, I can, by the way, you know, Shula, you know, the guy who went and did the, the, you know, the Shula wines, right? In one year. Yeah, many years. You know, he went from here, he went from the, you know, yeah, he had an idea, you know, he got this stuff from France and you know, he, he has made a big business out of that, right? Yeah, I think uh, apart from wine, I think the tourism also is very popular there. A lot of people yeah, do visit. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, right? yeah. So I, I think, you know, India needs to, you know, India has, you know, in spite of all the good climate, 
a good water situation, it needs to uh, move up the, the value chain. Yeah, California, California had zero almonds and zero pistachio when I first arrived here. California produces words, 80% of words almonds and 80% of words pistachio now. Do you guys know that? And, and, and there are Indian farmers in the California Central Valley who are very big, rich farmers. Peach business in California is controlled by Indians. You know, most of the vegetable business in Central Valley is controlled by Indians, Punjabi farmers. So why can't you know, you know, enable them to go back to Punjab, you know, in those foothills, you know, create, you know, you know, Punjab and California you know, climates are very similar. You know, so it's in the notion, you know, yeah, yeah, I do believe that government is a, is a problem, right? But, but we are a democracy, we have the government we want. Yeah, let's get back to the entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so just, uh, you know, just uh, I think uh, because you have already, you know, just mentioned that, you know, entrepreneurs should overcome the challenges. So there is already a question. So, you know, asking from you that, you know, what was the tough, toughest challenge you have overcome and how do you how did you address it basically? Yeah, the, the, oh, the my, toughest one, yeah. <laughs> my toughest challenge was a lack of confidence. Yeah. Yeah, I did not speak English well. I went to I went to a Hindi medium school in India. I went to IIT and I didn't speak English well. I came to America and I didn't speak English well. And, and yeah, so 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 I kept quiet and 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 not speaking English well translates into you know, seen as not a smart person. But once I started to see that I was smarter than when I started to see that I was smarter than anybody around me, I went and hired a speech teacher to improve my speech. You know, when I went to NASDAQ, you know, when I went to, when I became a CEO on the NASDAQ, I had to talk to the you know, financial people. I had a speech teacher I will rehearse my speech with her, yeah, you know, before I go out. So, so I identified the problem I had, and I, I overcame. By the way, for two years in a row, yeah, you know, on the Wall Street, I was yeah you know, voted as a best sports person for any company by the, all the analysts put together in a survey, which was very strange for for me because you know, I had speech problems, yeah. Yeah, you know, but but yeah, you know, they I spot the truth, and, and the analysts loved it. Yeah. So so, it, I think every problem, every short term, in every you know, challenge that you have is is a good thing. You know, it you motivation. Motiv it should motivate you. Yes. You know, eventually, you, know, you you have to say, I have to do it. I have to make it happen. Yeah, and yeah, the. The alternative is to accept defeat. Wonderful, right? wonderful point made. Very nice point made here. Mm. Uh, there, there is this uh, Tejas Shetty who has a very sharp question, a very pointed question to you. Like, how would one start a deep tech company like an alternative space launch company? I don't know. I mean, uh, if that uh, you would want to answer that. How would one start a deep tech company like an alternative space launch company other than rockets in India? What special mm -hmm. care must be taken to avoid the potential pitfalls? Well, yeah, so, so, so this is now a specific industry with a specific technology requiring specific insights into that, which I don't have, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, my thing is that if you think there's a market out there for this specific, yeah, the, yeah. Unknown caller. Uh, yeah, there's my phone. Yeah, the, the, if you think there's a specific uh, market out there for these things, you need, you have some deep insights and you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, everything has the same dynamic. You know, you need to develop your story and dream and then you need to go find a dream merchant, you know, to help you fund it, right? And uh, the reason, the VCs, by the way, I should tell you, the venture capital is a play money. It's not, it's not the savings, you know, that you have for your, your children's education or your daughter's wedding. This is a surplus capital, you know, that you want to go play and you want to achieve extraordinary results. You know, 
you're not going to be happy with 10% return. You want to have 100 times return of your capital. So you are willing to take the risk. So the dream merchants are out there trying to do this big game hunting. You know, and, and, and you need to position yourself as, hey, if I was to succeed, this would give you a thousand X return. Yeah. So you need to develop a story. You need to, yeah. you need to develop your skills to tell a story you know, with a straight face. And that's the other part of it. And you need to be able to tell a story with a straight face and become a believable person. That is the, uh, this, you know, the secret of being a successful entrepreneur, you know, that you become, you know, and like I told you, you're always selling you know, and uh, in a very convincing fashion. So I don't know how to answer the specific uh, issue about what are the specific problems in, in that. But space, now India is being seen as a very space savvy, you know, has found a frugal way of doing things. They are, can do wonders with small capital. That should be a good basis of building a story to go sell a space startup. Position yourself as one of those ISRO engineers who did this you know, wonderful magic with very little money. Yeah, right? so yeah, the next question is from Ajinkya and uh, he's asking where to look for a business partner and how to assess if he or she is the right one to move ahead with. It's like same as a life partner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it, yeah, yeah. You will know when things click. Yeah, I ma I married an American girl. Yeah, fifty two years ago. Yeah, yeah. She was a pen pal. Yeah, <laughs> this is a story. Yeah, yeah, for the times. I'm at IIT Bombay. I see an ad in Times of India, find a pen pal in America. I fill up the form. At New York World Fair, Potter Pen Pavilion has a, has a you know, pavilion. Find the pen pals all over the world. This girl fills up a form at New York World Fair. We don't match because we have the same birth date. I come to US, two years later we meet, two weeks later I propose, we get married 52 years ago. And yeah. So, yeah, there's a little bit of a lot, yeah, a little bit of huspa, yeah, yeah, and all that. Finding a partner, if the things I made earlier, divergent skills, divergent perspective, you know, somebody who adds to your, you know, thing, you know, somebody compliments, you know, you know the, the things that you don't have, right? Yeah, and uh, relationship of trust, absolute relationship of trust and respect. Those are the basis of forming a good entrepreneurial partners. Uh, the, uh, your story is very good. You know, during those days, you did not have social media. So, uh, mm -hmm. and still you could manage to do all those things, right? Yeah. So there is a question from Shreem Modi. He is not talking about social media. He says, what is your take on social media sector now? How are social media startups doing against big guns like Instagram? Yeah, well, so social media, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to do what I do, you know, you know, you know on the LinkedIn, right? Yeah. You know, it, it, you know just tell you some of my posts on LinkedIn have, have half a million, a million readers, views, you know, which is sort of amazing, right? Yeah, if I get less than $50,000, I said, oops, you yeah, know, that was not very good, you yeah. know. Yeah, so, so social media is a way to reach a broad set of you know, you know, people in a shallow fashion, right? right? You know, in the in internet itself, you know, let's start with the internet. Internet was a many-to-many -many communication in a very inexpensive fashion, right? You know, and social media is a layer about that one. So, so Facebook, some, somewhere along the line, you know, lost its way. I don't know, you know what Facebook is trying to achieve, but LinkedIn, yeah, I find it very, very good. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, it, it's a way to be a, a very influential at the same time. You know, a, a well connected to a large number of people, and 
yeah, it's a very easy way to get your masses. You know, if you have an idea that resonates with people, you know, yeah, 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 you, yeah, you, yeah. On a given average day, I get about hundred new people who become my followers. Just follow me on the LinkedIn. On average, I heard easily because yeah, you know, somebody forwarded my message to them. It resonates, right? You know, it's a good way to do marketing selling. Yeah. So I guess Shrey, you got your answer here. You got your answers here. Vaibha, would you want to take the next question or uh, should I continue with? Uh, I, I find a wonderful question here. You know, I mean, uh, this question keeps coming uh, from all uh, new startup person. You know? well, this question is from Deepak Kumar. He says, is it easier to copy an existing idea and make money along, uh, right along with the wave or just start, a, start with a fresh idea? So, so most of the startups, most of the startups are incremental. Yeah, yeah. The 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 way it works. If you are an engineer, you see a hole in a solution out there. Yeah, Microsoft has this application, yeah, and and this hole is there. I can plug in that hole, you know, very quickly, right? So most of the ideas are very simple, incremental, you know, and easy to easy to do, right? The big new audacious ideas that require market building require a huge amount of of uh, of money, you know, AI, you know, uh, or yeah, the iPhone, yeah, you know, they require massive investments. Yeah, you know, entrepreneurs are not able to do to do those. But what happens is once you get a, with an idea out there, you know, uh, uh, with it, you know, with the customer, uh, you need you, you start to get the insights. Once you're inside a customer, you start to get more insights as to what else he needs. What else can I do incrementally from where I am? Yeah, and uh, so so yeah, that's how the business is expanding. You know, I, I need to find that initial entree into the marketplace. Yeah, but the new ideas, brand new yeah, way of doing things. Yeah, a, several years of you know, investments. You know, are are much riskier and much harder to do, and and, and not as necessary. I I, I would say. But also, yeah, you don't want to do a me too and a day late. Yeah. You, you, know, you need to find holes in the solutions that are already out there are a evolutionary better way of doing things, uh, you know, yeah, than others have done. Yeah. Uh, and of course, there's this change of you know, this technology, it went from desktop to yeah, you know, cloud, you know, you know. I mean it's so you know, we doing the same thing you know, in a new environment, new changing. You know, technology environment. Change is required for entrepreneurs to succeed because change obsolete what's out there and needs to be replaced with new stuff. And that's what entrepreneurs do best. Yeah, there is another question that last decade was quoted as cheap capital era. How do you think, how do you see things changing for startups and VC is going ahead? The cheap capital era typically is very bad for everybody, including entrepreneurs. It's bad for everybody because uh, it starts to give a false sense of security. It, it, it cultivates wasteful habits, you know, and, and does things, frivolous things that have no value. Yeah, you know, when the capital is stairs, you know, that's when the creative uses flow. And, and the, you know, the creative people, you know, you know, in the other hand, Rather than the hucksters. So, so you know, like I said, the system is open looped. Yeah, you know, some few bit hits, few you know, new unicorns, and and the race starts all over again, right? So but but I am a, yeah. I, I am a strong believer in honest, you know, capital efficient, yeah, uh, yeah, startups, yeah. Yeah, I have trouble you know, with people you know, who, you know, I mean, I, I, I know uh, Vijay Shaker, I've known him since 2002, when I was, first went to visit a typical 197 or something like that. Yeah, you know, it's been 20 years. He hasn't made money yet, but he's super rich, right? I consider him as a hot star. 
Good, good to know, Kavalji. And uh, you know, we have almost you know just five minutes remaining. And you know, I am particularly interested both in entrepreneurship but also policy and public policy specifically. And I see that you know you have been there, you know, advising startups and government as a policy. Yeah, yeah, the, kind of, the, 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 I had the access to Prime Minister Vaspay. Yeah, probably, yeah. You know, he, he he liked me, so I would go see him every few months. But yeah, I, have not, so, I have no access to you know, you know the you know, the current people. Yeah, but by the way, I, I I do not like you know, the term set up policy. I think there has to be a lot more faith in Indians and Indian entrepreneurship than there is right now. You know, uh, Indians are just about the best entrepreneurs. You know, the Indian experience of diversity, large complex market prepares you really well. You know, and uh, you know, we just need to have faith and let, let it happen. Let it happen in India. You know, let open up the capital from all over the world to come to support Indian entrepreneurs in India. You know, the term you know, policy framework is discouraging the foreign capital to flow into India. It is very hard to invest in India. Very hard. I'm talking about the, the, you know, they sh shut down the, the Mauritius route, which was really, really good. You know, this, yeah, and uh, yeah, it, it is. I don't know yeah, who's thinking all that. Yeah, yeah. India needs 10 million entrepreneurs, 1% of the population. Yeah. And uh, so policy framework should be, how do we enable 10 million entrepreneurship and provide them the capital so they can do things that need to be, they think need to be done to transform, transform India. India will be transformed from, on, from bottom up, not from top down. Too large and too complex a marketplace. Good to know, Kavalji. In fact, yeah, because I'm deeply interested in that, so I thought of asking it. You know, I didn't see any policy questions in the set of questions, so I, I you know, I just thought thought of asking the yeah, same. I, I Pradeep, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think we need to have faith in market. What is market? Market is a collective wisdom of people. The market is same as democracy. In democracy, you vote for tenant A or tenant B. In marketplace, you vote for with your rupees. A product A, a product B, a service A, a service B. It's all about choices. Yeah, it's a collective, yeah. So marketplace is a collective choice of masses. Yeah. You have to have a faith in market. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. socialism, you know, it says, no, no, you can only buy one type of car, you can only buy one type of service, you know, is a wasteful to you know, do two different things. Right? So yeah, socialism keeps you poor. Marketplace, yeah, yeah, is where you create wealth. Yeah. So I think we'll take one more question and then yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. No, no, so I have, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a very interesting question here, right? Not uh, from Raja Agarwal. Raja Agarwal probably works for Microsoft, if I'm not wrong, uh, based out of Dubai. So he says, earlier you said I was set for life at fifty. How did you know that? When you already set at 45, 40, I want to understand how you drift the line to stop. I didn't stop Same ever. I Same have now, I still, I'm 78 and I work full time even now. I have never stopped working. You know, I said I didn't need to work. I didn't need to work for money to live ever again. Yeah, you know, when we were public in 1987. You know, I had enough money to live forever. Yeah. Yeah, but I have never stopped working. I ha I have I have done over two hundred startups. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where I'm either investor or founder, or over two hundred startups I have been involved with. I have been mentored. You know, maybe over ten thousand entrepreneurs. I still mentor two, three entrepreneurs, four entrepreneurs a week. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So I yeah, and of course I've been engaged on the policy front in the U.S. and in India. Yeah, so you know. The, everybody needs to feel productive and needs to be paid in the capital they you know, in the currency they appreciate you know it may not be money you know i don't need to be paid in money to you know yeah but i still need to be paid to feel emotionally yeah, productive and 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 satisfied right so but it's not an issue, issue of uh, yeah i was set for life in the sense it doesn't mean that i will stop working and become idle and do nothing and yeah I travel yeah. more than anybody else. 
I no, probably he meant pro probably Raja Agrawal meant that uh, financially. I mean, you are you are completely uh, you are set for life. So yeah, 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 you're yeah, set for life financially. Yeah, yeah, but but, but I didn't have as ambitious a financial draws as uh, Bill Gates did or Jeff Bezos did, right? Yeah. Okay, think, folks, uh, uh, we will end this uh, conversation here. Uh, before we go, obviously, Vaibhav is going to talk a bit. But uh, what I want to tell you guys here is uh, today is Kanwalji's birthday and also his spouse's birthday today. Right, sir? Yes. Oh, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> so, happy birthday to Kanwalji and his spouse. Uh, I would be very happy if all of us can wish him uh, either in the message box or uh, whatever, whichever way you would want to take it. No, no, no. I have already given you know if if your questions are unanswered, I've already given you the you know link where you can post your questions. And Kavalji is pretty active on LinkedIn, and you know whenever he gets time or he, you know if he, he finds a question interesting enough and he has time, probably you know slowly he will answer them. You know you know whenever he has time. So I think that would be all right, uh, Kavalji. Right? Yeah. I already bumped the tempo higher. <laughs> good, good to hear. Good to hear that. Uh, you know, ling, ling, uh, Kamalji. So you know, I think in the in the last uh, you know just uh, you know just last one minute, I'll take this last one minute. Although the time is already over, so I would like to thank uh, thank you a lot, uh, Kamalji, for your precious time. It was great, and you know everyone loved it. And uh, yeah, you know, obviously, you know, we, we are all, you know, who, who are ITNs are always thankful to you what you know, how you have been supporting IT Bombay. But, uh, you know, still you keep that tempo high and, you know, keep supporting, you know, all the young entrepreneurs, with, which is really excellent and motivational for, especially for young entrepreneurs like me. Yeah. You know, thank, thanks a lot uh, for your time, uh, Kavanthi. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you everyone for attending. I said happy birthday. So that was what I was saying. <laughs> happy birthday once again. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, happy birthday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true, true.